Welcome to It Resolves, and today we are taking a quick break from the binder and opening up one of my favorite sets of all time, Guild Pack. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. And yes, I know we are not doing a binder update this week. Unfortunately, because I was out of town for so long this past week, really didn't have time to get anything in, get everything sorted and kind of get that video recorded. Uh, so I do apologize for that, but we are here with a pack opening. And truthfully, I'm actually really excited about this because this is not just any pack opening, it is a pack opening of one of my favorite sets from one of my favorite blocks of all time, Guild Pact. Now, Guild Pact, again, came out during one of my favorite blocks, that original Ravnica block has so many iconic cards from it and some of my favorite pieces of artwork in the set as well. We are gonna be looking for things like the Shocklands in this pack. That is probably the biggest pull we could have as far as value goes. And truthfully, it's one of the most iconic pieces of lands in modern magic history and so I'm really excited to see what we can get. Without further ado guys we are going to jump right into this one. Hopefully we can have some fun and maybe open up some value along the way. Let's see what we get. All right, everybody, here we are with our pack of Guild Pact. Again, I'm very excited for this one because it is out of one of my favorite sets of all time or one of my favorite blocks of all time, I should say. Uh, this is really going to be a special experience for me as well because I haven't opened one of these packs since its original release. It has been quite a while. Uh, as far as I can remember, I may have actually, I take that back, I may have actually done that during the crack of pack during the early days of It Resolves. That being said though, again, it's still been a while. Uh, and we're gonna try and get this open. There we go. Uh, and let's see what we can get, guys. Um, I, oh goodness, that old school glue is just holding on. Uh, ooh, my autofocus is going crazy here too. There we go, all right. Uh, so again, guys, we're gonna kind of talk through each card here, hopefully kind of discuss some of the uh, some of the notable cards in the set that have made more of a lasting impact, but we're also gonna be kind of looking at this from a draft perspective. So we're actually gonna see maybe which card we would draft in a situation of uh, maybe we're opening this as pack one and we're looking for our pick one. Uh, keeping in mind that this is a multicolor focused set, uh, we see that very easily starting off here with a Gruul Signet. Gruul Signet being one of a cycle. Uh, this one, you can tap one, tap it, and it'll add red and a green to your mana pool. Uh, this is a two mana artifact again. We've we've seen these, especially if you play Commander or anything like that. These are very common. Uh, and this original art version is actually really cool. I do love the original versions of these. Um, one thing I would note about these is that they are always really good pickups once you kind of know what color you're in or in the early turns of a draft or in the early draft picks, they're really good for just being able to kind of set yourself up for whatever you might find later on. Uh, that being said, these signets are always a nice nice little pickup. Uh, now, I wouldn't hope to pick it first one, uh, but it certainly is an option. We'll kind of keep it to the side for now. Uh, I am gonna kind of work on the focus. I did remember not to uh, autofocus this time. Uh, Pyromatics, one and a red for an instant. It does feature the replicate mechanics. So uh, when you play this spell, copy it for each time you've paid the replication cost. You can obviously choose new top, new uh, copies or targets, excuse me, for the copies. Uh, it deals one damage to target creature or player. Pretty straightforward. Uh, truthfully though, in the end of drafting, uh, removal is up there as one of the most important pieces in in the game. I think drafting removal is always a good idea. Uh, that being said, this isn't necessarily a super strong version of removal. I think that's fair to say. Also, ooh, just gonna turn that light down a little bit. Uh, yeah, this is a very reasonable card because it does scale, but again, it's only one damage for every two mana. It's a little bit tricky. Uh, I do like this, but I, I don't know if it stands up to the Gruul Signet. We'll keep it to the side, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, Infiltrator's Mage Mark is our next card. It is an aura enchant creature. Uh, uh, creatures you control that are enchanted get plus one, plus one, and can't be blocked except by creatures with Defender. Uh, this essentially gives a creature, in my uh, assumption at least, uh, unblockable because you really aren't going to expect that the uh, opponent is gonna draft too many defenders in the set. Now, that might be wrong. I don't know the set as well as maybe I should, but that is kind of a nice ability to give that evasion right off the bat. And of course, just give a little bit of a power toughness boost as well. Now, what I will say about this, uh, and I've said this before, and I think it's a really important statement to make, Anytime you have an enchant creature that is to the benefit of your creatures, 
you have to keep in mind you need a creature on the field for it to matter at all uh, because otherwise this is truthfully just a dead card uh, and that is very much worth noting in my opinion I would suggest that that kind of takes away the value of this card just a little bit you can't always count on the fact that you're gonna have cards on the field uh, and so for me I would generally shy away from a card like this this is certainly not something I'm looking to first pick at all uh, really quick as well I'm gonna try and do one thing Ooh, let's see Let's turn, there we go. Let's get that ISO down just a little bit. It makes it a little bit easier for you guys to see. Uh, all right, Absolver Thrall is our next card here. Uh, this is three and a white for a two three with Haunt. Uh, so when this card is put into a graveyard from play, remove it from the game Haunting target creature. Pretty cool mechanic in my opinion. Uh, when it comes into play or the creature it haunts uh, is put into the graveyard, destroy target enchantment. Uh, well, now it's just too dark. Goodness, the light is not working with me, guys. I'm so sorry. Uh, let's make sure we uh, crank that up just a bit. Um, this is the definition, in my opinion, of a great sideboard card. Uh, not something I'm looking to have right off the bat, but if the opponent does have a big scary enchantment that maybe we do want to destroy at some point uh, in the game, this does give us that option. And so, in general, cards like this are regulated mostly to the sideboard unless, unless, you're looking at a set like Theros or something like that where enchantments are very prevalent. You're going to want to be able to destroy them. Uh, but Guild Pact, I don't think, is necessarily that set. And so for me, this is definitely sideboard, not something I want to pick up early. The sun is coming out. <laughs> uh, Scab Clan Mauler. Uh, really interesting gruel card here. Red and a green for a 1-1 with Trample and Bloodthirst. Uh, in particular, Bloodthirst 2. So uh, if an opponent was dealt damage this turn, the creature comes into play with two 1-1 counters on it. So what you could get is a 3-3 Trampler for two, uh, which is quite good uh, in general. I think obviously that's, everybody would agree that's pretty good value. Uh, I think the trick with a card like this uh, is if you are kind of in an aggressive build, this is the exact kind of card you want because not only does it capitalize on that, uh, but it also progresses that. It has trample, it has a little bit of extra power and toughness, especially for the time that we are looking at this set. Uh, and so for me, I actually do like it. Whether it's first pickable or not, I'm thinking maybe not. Uh, but it is quite a reasonable card if you happen to be in a gruel deck already kind of in that aggressive strategy. Definitely like it. And certainly aggression is pretty rewarded in general uh, when it comes to draft formats. Uh, Gruel Turf, uh, all the Gruel stuff today it seems like. This is part of the Bounce Land cycle. It taps for a red and a green. It does come into play tapped and then when it comes into play, return a land you control to its owner's hand, uh, hence the bounce name. Um, this is a really nice little land, honestly. If you're looking to fix your mana, this is a great way to do it. The trick is, especially in the Gruel uh, archetype, obviously you're looking to be aggressive. You do have to consider the fact that this comes into play tapped. Uh, and balance that with the fact that it does fix your mana because obviously as we saw with the previous card sometimes you need both colors of mana to play a two drop and that's a little scary sometimes so uh, you do kind of have to weigh those expectations and kind of manage that uh, generally I find you pick these up when you've kind of already got an idea of the color combination you're in uh, you can because of things like these and the signets uh, actually splash into a third color relatively easily in a set like this because you've got a lot of the fixing available for you. Uh, I do really like that about this set. Uh, in general though, again, probably not a first pick, but definitely a reasonable card to pick up for your draft deck along the way. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Morning Thrall, one of our Orozov cards. So this is one and then a hybrid of either white or black for a 1-1 with flying. Uh, whenever it deals damage, you gain that much life, essentially providing lifelink. Uh, in general, it's not that good. It's a 2-mana 1-1 one, one with flying and lifelink, which is perfectly fine, but it's very easy to deal with. And if we look at some of the other cards we've seen, in fact, we can deal with this with only 2-mana. <laughs> uh, potentially less, depending on how you do it. Uh, and it gets outpowered quite quickly. Uh, while flyers should be considered as high-value cards, in my opinion, in draft, I think that evasion is always important. Uh, in general, I don't necessarily think this is where you want to be. Definitely a cool card. I love the artwork, but again, not super high-valued. 
All right, train of thought, one at a blue uh, for a sorcery with replicate once again, one at a blue again. So you can copy this as many times as you'd like by paying an extra one at a blue. Uh, and this just simply draws you a card. Perfectly reasonable card. Uh, it's not something that I would really care to pick up super early. It's one of those that if I'm in blue, cool. If I need a le little extra card draw, it's great for that. Uh, but generally you want to be more proactive in draft. So while card draw is good, I'd much rather just have a very strong creature, maybe a removal piece, something that really impacts the board a lot more. Uh, and while this certainly sets you up to do that, it doesn't necessarily get you there on its own. Uh, and again, I'd rather have cards that kind of do that on their own. So for me, uh, this is not necessarily a card I'm looking to take. If I'm in blue, cool, it's in the pack, that's fine. But I'm not there yet, and so obviously this is not a first pick. Restless Bones, two and a black for a 1-1. One, one. Uh, you can pay uh, three and a black and tap it. Target creature gains Swamp Walk until the end of the turn. For anybody that doesn't know what that is, especially if you're a new player, they kind of got rid of these terms. Uh, all that essentially means is that if the opponent uh, you are attacking with this creature has a Swamp, this creature cannot be blocked. Just very simple terms. Uh, you can also pay one and a black and regenerate it. I would anticipate there is some amount of value in the fact that you can regenerate this. Uh, if you don't know what that means, if it would die, instead it comes back to the battlefield tapped. Uh, very nice little ability because it just makes it tricky to deal with. That being said, the value on board isn't necessarily all that high. It's a 1-1. One, one. Uh, where you can kind of maybe play around with it is that Swamp Walk ability, but you are going to need multiple cards to kind of get that to go. Uh, for me, this is not something I'm looking to first pick. I think it's a really interesting card, definitely one you could play around with, but not first pick. All right, uh, Fencer's Mage Mark. This is another enchant creature for two and a red. Creatures uh, you control that are enchanted get plus one, plus one, and have first strike. Obviously, part of the cycle that we saw earlier with the blue enchant creature. Uh, again, same things really apply. I do like this one a little bit for the aggression with the first strike, but I mean, truthfully, I'd rather just have unblockable. So uh, for me, it's fine. I don't love it. I really shy away from enchant creatures unless there is like a sub theme to it. Uh, and in general, I think these these are just kind of one off cycles. And so for me, I'm not really all that intrigued by this card. I would not take it. Uh, even if I was in a very aggressive deck, they, there might be a place for it. Of course, I'm sure, you know, you start picking and choosing some of the cards. There might be some way that you can include this. Uh, it's an easy include, but you have to have a creature on the field and sometimes you don't. Uh, I would love to say I always do, but I don't sometimes. So gonna pass up on that. Oh wow, classic card, We Dragonauts. Uh, very, very fun card here. It's a one three for one, a blue and a red featured in the Is It uh, guild. Does have flying, uh, so already a plus side. Whenever you play an instant or sorcery spell, it gets plus two plus zero until the end of the turn. Uh, this certainly fits into the Is It build. Uh, now, whether it's a reason to be in the Is It build or not is really up to you. I, in draft, probably not so much would would consider this as a, as a major option. I think there's actually like a, a fun kind of Spells Matters build that you can do in the um, in like a, a mini constructive format or a popper format, something like that. Uh, it's not necessarily high powered in that, but it is quite good. Um, what I would suggest is this encourages your deck to have a lot more instants and sorceries. I'd rather have those big instants and sorceries first and then take a card like this that's going to capitalize on it because I think in general drafting you want board presence most of all. I think that is almost paramount to everything else in the format. Now I'm sure there are much better drafters out there that would argue that and that's totally fine. Um, I'm not saying I'm the best drafter in the world but I do think having you know, a good strong board presence within your deck is always important to have. This kind of naturally encourages you to shy away from that, uh, which I don't necessarily think is always good. I think you kind of need to have stuff on the board to progress your game plan. Uh, instance and sorceries can get there, of course, but I'd rather have that core built up first before taking something like this, especially given that it is at common. All right, our first uncommon, Revenant Patriarch. Four and a black for a 4-3. When it comes to the play, if uh, white was spent to play it, uh, target player uh, skips his or her next combat phase, and then this also cannot block. Uh, one thing I would just love to note off the bat, look at this artwork. <laughs> that is beautiful. Um, as far as this card goes, though, 
How do we feel about it? Uh, a little, a little back and forth. I don't think it's amazing. Obviously in an Orzhov build, you are at its best because you can naturally pay the white. Uh, I don't love that it can't block. Uh, and a five mana four three is a little under budget in terms of what you would maybe want. Uh, I do like the fact that you can skip the next uh, combat phase for your opponent if you happen to be in that position. But again, you're kind of relying on other resources, which are not necessarily difficult to get, but certainly something to consider. The flexibility of a card is always really important, and I think without that ability, this isn't actually all that great of a card. Uh, and so for that reason, I would probably choose not to first pick it above some of the other things that we've gotten, even that little removal piece at the beginning of the game, or, or, or the pack. Uh, that might be incorrect again, I'm not an expert drafter, but that would just be my initial thought. Uh, so I think I would shy away from this. Uh, I do like the power. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice powerhouse. Uh, Gelectrode? Gelectrode? I don't know. One blue red for a zero one. You can tap it and it deals one damage to target creature or player. Uh, and whenever you play an instant or sorcery, you can untap it. This is very reminiscent of some of the newer cards that we have seen, the 0-4, and I can't think of the name, uh, but basically it does the exact same thing. It's a pinger. Um, what's really important about this is it's actually a, it, it can target creatures. Uh, that might seem a little insignificant, but that's actually really good. And obviously there's a theme here with the is it build that we are seeing, which is obviously very skewed towards instants and sorceries. Uh, having not drafted during that time, I don't know how good that was, if that makes sense. But this certainly seems like a stronger payoff than the Wii Dragonauts in the sense that uh, you can use your spells to deal with things and hopefully get extra value off of them with every ping of damage that you do. I like that. Uh, I like that quite a lot. This also gives you an outlet for dealing damage to the opponent without actually attacking them, uh, which you have to think about board state position. That certainly is something to consider. It is nice in a board stall to just be able to start pinging your opponent for some damage. Uh, now again, I stand by my statement earlier that it's difficult to build a Spells Matters deck all the time in draft. However, uh, I think this might be a strong enough payoff that it's worth considering, is all I will say. Uh, we'll see what we actually get in the rest of the pack. Oh, guys, we did it. Uh, we got a Stomping Ground. That's amazing. Uh, this is the original version of Stomping Ground. Absolutely beautiful. If you were value drafting, this is the card to draft. Uh, don't recommend necessarily drafting it for real, but this is awesome. Uh, I, I'm so happy to pull this. This is phenomenal. Uh, normally, I set this kind of stuff up and in my head I'm like, man, that'd be great, but it's never going to happen. It happened. Uh, I'm really happy with that. I think the only one above this in value is Steam Vents, naturally speaking, like without foiling. Uh, and so that's actually really ex just super, super exciting. Uh, we'll see a little price marker up too. Drafting, I wouldn't recommend taking this. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that right off the bat. Not as a first pick. If you're in the colors, take it later on. Generally speaking, I wouldn't just go for it. Uh, I, I think it's a very nice card, but obviously, you know, it, it's not a, a board presence. It's just smoothing out your mana. Man, uh, whew, I'm very happy to see that. That's really nice. We might have a foil we do. Uh, Predatory Focus. Uh, don't actually know this card. Three and two greed for a sorcery. You may have creatures you control deal their combat damage to de the defending player this turn as though they were not blocked. Interesting. Uh, seems like a potential game winning spell, but again, it's a bit dependent. Uh, you do obviously have to have creatures attacking and all that kind of stuff to make that worth it. Uh, certainly that's good if you have that position, but sometimes you're not always going to have that. Uh, for that reason, I probably wouldn't pick it. I think it becomes uh, between three cards here, uh, and we'll talk about that in the wrap up. All right, sorry guys, the uh, the other camera there just kind of froze up and I'm not sure why. So instead, we're gonna talk about it here. Uh, I do think it's between the Gruul Signet that we saw, uh, the Pyromatics, and then the Gelectrode, Gelectrode, whatever it is. I think I would probably go for the Gelectrode, uh, despite what I said about the fact that you don't necessarily want Spells Matters cards all the time in draft. I think that's a good enough payoff that it might be worth it. It is easy to deal with, that is worth noting, but I do really, really like the card. I think it, it kind of builds the deck for you a little bit in that direction. You kind of go that, that way, so uh, I do really like it for that reason. And again, it's just a really cool card and flexible. I like that. Uh, in general, guys, this was an absolute blast. I can't believe we pulled a stomping ground. I'm very excited for that. And again, 
I do appreciate you guys being so flexible with me and doing the binder updates mixed in with some of these pack openings. This is one of the more exciting ones. We did pull one of our shock lands. Oh, so happy about that. Uh, and hopefully you guys had a blast along with me. Sorry for the technical difficulties, the visual difficulties, things like that, but we'll, we'll get those worked out. I love you all very much. Have a fantastic Saturday. I'll see you guys again tomorrow for some gameplay video. I cannot wait to see you then. I'll talk to you guys again.